For the last two Mondays, we have discussed two people who vanished in the Bennington Triangle. As you know, the Bennington Triangle is part of a national forest, and unexplained disappearances are actually quite common in national forests. It seems sometimes when we're in these national parks and forests, it isn't the wild animals that we have to worry about. But maybe something a little bit more spiritual. Maybe things like portals. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. A very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you, we could not do what we do. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. And if you are a producer of Esoteric Atlanta and you have not sent me your business for me to promote on my channel, then please go ahead and send your business information to the email address listed in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about the strange disappearance of James Tedford. Now, as I said in the introduction, this is the third person that we are going to be discussing who went missing in the Bennington Triangle. Now, in the first two episodes, I did discuss some of the other phenomenon that has happened in this region. If you missed those episodes, there are links down in the description box below. Because I have discussed the phenomenon that has happened in the Bennington Triangle in the past two episodes, I'm not going to repeat it today. Now, with James Tedford's disappearance, in my opinion, this is the strangest. With both Paula Jean Weldon and Mitty Rivers, yes, those two were also very strange disappearances, especially since nothing was found of them, well, except for one little cartridge that belonged to Mitty Rivers. But despite that, there can also be other explanations. They could have been abducted. There could have been something ha that happened in nature that removed their bodies for some strange reason. That type of phenomenon happens, and it's not necessarily something that is crazy or off-world or super sinister. It just is what it is in nature. But with James Tedford, his case to me is the absolute most peculiar. And to me, it's the one case out of all the cases that definitely scream that this Bennington Triangle possibly holds a portal. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot of information on James Tedford. All I have is the basic story. But there's one part of his story dealing with his wife that's also very, very peculiar. So let's get started with James Tedford. In December of 1941, the United States entered into the Second World War. James Tedford was a 56-year-old war veteran who decided to re-enlist into the army to serve his country in the Second World War for the Allied forces. Now, James' wife, a woman named Pearl Tedford, was a good bit younger than James. She was 28 years old. Now, the age difference doesn't really seem to matter in the story of both of their disappearances, but with everything I read about this case, it was always brought up. But for all intent and purposes, before James Tedford left to go serve in the Second World War, he had a very, very happy marriage with his wife, Pearl. The Tedfords lived in a very a small town in Vermont. And after the end of World War II, James returned back to his wife, Pearl. And this is when his whole world and her world got turned upside down. 
One day, James returned home for the day and he found his wife was nowhere to be seen. The house was orderly. In fact, there was a meal, a warm meal left for him for his dinner. Nothing seemed to be quite peculiar in the house. No suitcases were missing. All of her clothes were still hanging in the closet. So James just assumed that his wife Pearl was out running errands and would be back shortly. But over time, Pearl never returned. James immediately contacted the neighbors to see if they had seen his wife. And the only person who had seen his wife that day was a neighbor who saw his wife heading to the local store. After she was done shopping at the local grocery store, she was never seen again. She vanished. Now again, some people will say, oh, she probably just ran off. After all, this was a 28-year-old woman. But as I said, they had a happy marriage. And if she was going to leave James, wouldn't she have packed a suitcase, brought her belongings with her, made sure she had enough money to get where she was going? Well, she had done none of that. And why would she be heading to the grocery store to go shopping for her house with James if she wasn't planning on coming back. And if Pearl was planning on leaving James, I don't think she would have been in quite a chipper mood or been acting normal to their neighbors. So this vanishing, again, quite peculiar. But as I said, there's not much information to go on. The year at this point was 1946. So of course, many, many, many years have passed. And it's not like we had forensic evidence or forensic scientists at this time to do even a thorough search of the house or the property to see what they could find. Well, after Pearl vanished, James went into a very strange depression. Now, I say strange depression, and I probably shouldn't say strange depression because depression does affect people differently. For James, he became housebound. He would not leave his home. And for his friends and family that would go check on James, he would be seen just sitting there staring at the wall. Now, in 1947, a year after Pearl's disappearance, James decided that he was going to move into a retirement home. This was the Soldiers' Retirement Home in Bennington, Vermont. Now, while James was at the retirement home, he continued to act like he did when he was at home after his wife had vanished. He continued to stay aloof and to just kind of sit and stare at the wall, almost like his mind was slowly leaving him. Well, James still had family in St. Albans, Vermont. And so from time to time, James would take the eight hour bus ride to his family in St. Albans to visit them. Now the bus would take Route 7. This particular route goes directly through what is known as the Bennington Triangle. In December of 1949, three years after the disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon, James decided to go visit his family in St. Albans. He made it to St. Albans, had the visit, but on the way back, he vanished. And when I say he vanished, he literally vanished into thin air. According to the records, the bus did not make any stops between St. Albans and Bennington, Vermont. There were also 15 other passengers on the bus who witnessed this phenomenon of this elderly man vanishing. When the bus pulled up in Bennington, all that was left was James's luggage, his cash, his wallet, and his itinerary, just sitting on the seat where he had been. There was no racket. For example, if he had tried to open the window and jump out the window, the 15 other people on the bus would have heard the commotion and probably pulled him back in. But none of that happened. The bus ride, for all intents and purposes, was very cool, calm, and collected. Nothing seemed to be out of order except for the fact that James just vanished. And like his wife, James himself was never seen again. Now, as I said, this case out of all of the five cases that we're going to be covering in the Bennington Triangle is the most peculiar. Again, with Mitty Rivers or Paula Jean Weldon, 
they were by themselves when they vanished. But for James Tedford, there were 15 people around him in a moving vehicle, a moving vehicle that did not stop. And in my opinion, out of all the stories of Bennington Triangle, this one is the one that carries the greatest proof that there is some sort of portal there. Now, once we're finished going over the Bennington Triangle, I am planning on asking Janine just to do a full on episode over all of these cases and perhaps touching on some other cases in other national parks. Because I think most of you probably agree with me that there's something very fishy happening here. All right, guys, happy, happy Monday. Please leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. It's getting exciting out there. We are at the precipice of change, and I wish all of you a bunch of love. Keep shining. Keep showing that love, that mercy, and that grace of God within your beautiful being. Thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video up on the internet for you to watch and comment on. I always love hearing what you guys have to say because multiple heads are better than one. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.